What's up, y'all? Peace, peace and light. It's traveling since if this is your first time joining the channel, then welcome. If not, welcome back, family. I really hope it doesn't downpour. I hear the rain hitting the leaves. Oh my God. I just want to be outside right now, you guys. Today is my fifth, my fifth anniversary of being here in Tanzania. And I'm just up here in Arusha. I am soaking in the nature. I'm soaking in the cool weather, the mountains, the greenery, all of that good stuff, you guys. But it is rainy season and I'm just praying that I don't have to bolt out of here with the camera. But if I have to, I will. So anyways, yes, you guys, five freaking years. Oh my God, what a journey. Oh man, it has been a whirlwind of a journey. Ups, downs, in-betweens. So y'all may have noticed that I've been on a bit of a hiatus. You know, my last video was, what, October? October 10th, 11th, somewhere around there, somewhere around the second week of October. You know, I've just been taking time for me. I have been taking time for me. It's been a lot of growth that's happened literally in the past two months. Like, oh my God. So where do I even start with this? So I feel like things have been coming full circle, right? When I first got out here, December 11th, 2016, I was out here for a couple of months and then my first video I uploaded in um, February. So I had just really been gaining my footing and figuring things out, trying to find a place to live, uh, figuring out my surroundings and all that good stuff. And then I felt comfortable uploading a video. So I guess you can kind of say, things have come full circle and that's what I've been doing for the past couple months. You know what I'm saying? I've been regaining my footing, diving deeper into who I was, taking time for me because that's something that I haven't been doing these past few years. I have not been taking time for Cat, checking in with Cat to see what what Cat wants, what's good for Cat. You see what I'm saying? Freddie and I have has have helped a lot of people, a lot of diasporans come out here to find homes in Arusha, to find homes in Dar es Salaam, even um, Morogoro, even Zanzibar, you know. And I love the work that we had been doing. And I say had been because we're not doing it anymore. Um, but I, I loved that space that we were in. I loved that time in our life, but it had gotten to be exhausting. You know what I'm saying? To where we were giving, 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 and we weren't checking in with self, you know? And especially me, I, I wasn't really checking in with myself. So long story short, that's what I've been doing for the past couple months. Um, realizing that I needed some healing, realizing that I needed some space. So I came here to just, you know, kind of talk about the journey and, and the ups and downs that I've had. It's not gonna be a super long video because I mean, <laughs> y'all don't wanna sit through all that. I actually, I have a podcast that's ready to go. If, if y'all follow me on Instagram, then y'all saw me announce this podcast like beginning of January. I mean, beginning of January, beginning of November, saying that it was coming out. And it's been sitting there. It's been sitting there since then. And it was just one of those things where I was reevaluating as well. Um, is this something that I want to commit to? Again, you know, putting another thing on my plate and just really I don't want to overload myself, okay? I hope y'all can hear me. It's a lot going on in the background. They are going off in church. And it's a Saturday. I'm like, okay, y'all do y'all thing. Might, might catch the Holy Ghost through this video. You know what I'm saying? But um, this podcast is something, it's called Traveling Sister Unfiltered. And it's actually just me being unfiltered because I mean, we, we just live in an age right now. It's so freaking weird. It's so weird. Like this whole social media um, censorship and even YouTube is censoring videos now. Everything has to be politically correct and which is not really correct. And we're living in very strange times nowadays, but I just wanted something that was going to be mine, something where I could have the space to talk about my journey spiritually, physically, you know, I'm not in this podcast. I'm not really going to be talking about visa issues and things like that, but just more of an inward journey. You know, y'all seen a lot of my outward journey here on YouTube. This podcast traveling sister unfiltered is, is more of an inward journey. Okay. But this video is really not about that, but you know, 
if this is something you guys are interested in, like, let me know in the comment section. Like, would y'all be interested? Would y'all be down to listen to a podcast? I'm going to put it up either way. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to put it up either way. But I just want to see what you guys' opinion is on this. Um, I want to start a dialogue. I want to feel like, you know what I'm saying, we're talking to each other. Hold on. This is, um, this is somebody at the gate right now. I want them to go away, Loki. <laughs> Hold on. Can you see me? Can you see me? Okay. That was actually my niece and nephew, you guys. They came to get some hot pots from my house because it is my niece's birthday. And they are having a celebration at my um, my sister-in-law's house. So that just goes to tell you like how fast time flies out here. My niece is already one years old, y'all. One years old, and I swear to God, it was just yesterday. Just like this journey, like, I feel like it hasn't even been five years, for real. It hasn't even been five years in life. Oh. Man, life, life has just been such a series of ups and downs. It, the the whole the whole adventure, okay, the whole adventure. It has not been pretty. It has not been pretty. There is parts of it that have been amazing, okay. Parts of it has been amazing, but really, like, what I feel like a lot of people don't do, especially YouTubers, okay. A lot of people aren't being real with parts of their journey. They're glamorizing it. They are um, making it seem like now that they've reached the motherland, it's just all, oh my God, drum circles and head wraps. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not like that, <laughs> okay? It's, it's not like that. And, um, you know, if I'm being real, it's, it's been the majority of it, honestly though, the, the majority of my journey personally has been amazing. And I know a lot of that is due to me having a Tanzanian husband. He's helped me navigate through and over situations that I would have not, I would not have been able to navigate through as smoothly. I would have been able to do it because that's just who I am. I get things done, all right? But, um, you know, the journey w would have not been as smooth if I hadn't had him by my side, you guys. So really, I just wanna take this time to talk about some of my biggest lessons, all right? My biggest lessons, my nephew over here looking at me, I see you, <laughs> he over here looking at me on the camera. But, um, you know, one of the biggest lessons is patience and letting go, okay? Um, and I know I talk and talk and talk about this, but you guys, it's so real. I, I keep speaking about it and other YouTubers are always speaking about this because it's real. You guys, like you have to come with your patience. Tanzania is not like a lot of other countries, you know what I'm saying? Especially Ghana where a lot of people repatriate to. And by the way, did y'all hear that they are enforcing mandatory vaccines? Dramatic pause. Like, <laughs> I'ma just sit that right there. I'm pretty sure most of y'all have heard it, but like, wow, you know? So far here in Tanzania, there hasn't been any talk about making it mandatory, but I'm just, you know, I'm saying like, you never know what can happen from day to day nowadays. But, um, you know, it's not, back to, my, back to my point though, it's not as easy of a transition as someplace like Ghana or, um, like Senegal or you know all these other places that have programs in place or you know laws in place or clauses you know whatever in place for the diaspora and I'm not even sure that Senegal does um I know the Gambia and you know a couple other West African countries where it's just easier to repatriate to um so those are those are hurdles within themselves um i can't stop looking at this bird it's like blue and yellow up there blue yellow and black is so beautiful anyways um you know there's there's other countries that make it a lot easier for diasporans to come to tanzania is not one of them it's not you know but at the same time you kind of got to respect it because they're protecting what's theirs you know if they made it easy for just anyone to come in then they would be like a lot of these other African countries in debt up to their eyeballs <laughs> to the Chinese, to, you know, all these other European powers and things like that. And I know I talk about this a lot too, so I'm moving away from this. But yeah, the, the journey has showed me that patience is a must. Patience is a must. Um, you know, 
I'm not going to sit up here and lie that, you know, parts of the culture. Um, okay, Nakuja. Okay. All right. Bye. <laughs> parts of the journey um, or parts of the adjustment, um, it, it's frustrated the heck out of me. You know what I'm saying? It, it's really like a lot to adjust to. Um, sometimes I feel like a lot of people out here, a lot of locals, um, just have a, a whole different mentality when it comes to work ethic, when it comes to professionalism. And I know I've touched on this already. I'm not going to get into it. I'm not going to make this a, you know, complaining bitch fest. But I will, I will say that that has been a huge part of my journey where it's frustrated me to the end of my sanity like yo why can't why can't we just get things done right the first time or why can't we just have integrity when it comes to business why can't why can't we just have simple professionalism simple courtesies but you know like i said every culture has their struggles and i'm pretty sure that tanzanian people look at an uh, american people or people from the west like why can't y'all just get this one simple thing right like it's natural to us it's natural here that has been a patient a uh, uh, a uh, part where I'm working on myself with patients. Another thing that I've really had to come full circle with, and this, these past two months of my life has really showed me this in plain sight, to let go of things that do not serve me with grace. Let go with grace, not with animosity, not with the, oh man, F that spirit, like with grace and be thankful to the universe that it showed you what it needed to show you about a certain person, a certain situation, a certain way that you were looking at a situation or a person. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's like the universe has been forcing things, forcing ideas and people out of my life. And you know, it's an adjustment anytime you're you're going through a, a paradigm shift in your life anytime that you are going through a change a major unfolding in your life it's not going to be easy it's called growth so when we are growing into the person that we are supposed to be it can be a very uncomfortable transition, but we gotta be thankful to the universe for that. We really have to sit in a space of gratitude, not like, oh, why why am I taking this L right now? Cause it's not always an L. Like you, you, you really have to look at it like, what is the lesson in this, you know? And even more, just being thankful for where you're at, being thankful for going through what you're going through at that very moment whether it's frustrations, frustrations with learning the culture, learning the people, um, figuring out people who are, you know, are, are this way or that way, or not who they say they are, not who they pretend to be. And then also understanding that people are going through their own personal battles. You know what I'm saying? And, and even if it is seemingly about you, it's not about you. It's never about you, how arrogant. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, people, even when people overcharge you because you speak English and they hear that, that accent, even though you might say, you know, the price is in Swahili or ask what the price is in Swahili, like they still hear that accent and they charge you accordingly. You got to learn to bargain. You got to learn not to take it personal because it's not about you. It is not about you. They do it to everybody. They even do it to, to other Tanzanian people, right? So learning that situations that I'm going through that's involve other people if they do something what it seems to me to be out of character or um, you know just not sisterly or brotherly like it's not about me it's not people really have their own things that they're going through especially us diaspora who you know relocated here to Tanzania or who are thinking to relocate just anywhere in Africa, this applies to all, you know what I'm saying, to all places. And not even Africa, if you're a diaspora looking to move to Bali, if you're looking to move to Ecuador, you know what I'm saying, wherever, Puerto Rico, Jamaica, like wherever you're looking to move to, you have to understand that a lot of these places that we're moving to, towards a more natural lifestyle, more natural vibration. Um, the people who are indigenous to there or who have been there for the longest time, um, 
they have a whole different way of going about things, about problem solving. Our problems are not their problems. And even though sometimes we want people to look at our problems in a, a grand scale, like, oh, like take them on as our pro or their problems as well. I hope that made sense. Let me repeat it. So even though sometimes the people who we're involved with in life, we want them to look and feel that our problems are their problems and have much have as much weight in their life as they do in ours but it doesn't work like that especially for us people who are empaths you know we tend to take on other people's problems and embody them and feel like we have to solve them or you know help people in in certain in a certain type of way but at the end of the day nobody owes you nothing and since my solar return on October 1st, I have really just been coming into a whole new way of viewing things and, and thinking about things. And one of the lessons that my father, my biological father has taught me in life, don't nobody owe you a damn thing. Nobody owes you nothing. And it's up to you to rectify and reconcile the things within yourself. You can't put that on anyone and just because someone uh, responds or reacts in a way that that doesn't sit with you energetically um, it's not <laughs> it's not their job to, to to curtail who they are for you and I'm telling you this has really revealed itself um, through so many parts of my life here in this journey throughout the whole five years it's not up to anyone to make you comfortable, to make you feel welcomed, to make you feel like they're choosing you. Everyone wants to be chose. Everyone wants to be chose. Because what we have to realize is that we are not for everyone. And that gets me to the next point. It's okay if Tanzania is not for you. It's, it's not for everyone. And that has been another huge thing that's been revealed to me on this journey is that it's not for everyone. I can't lie, in the beginning of this journey of helping people, I, um, you know, I would feel kind of bad that like, you know, sometimes people wouldn't resonate with Tanzania or Tanzania wouldn't resonate with people. It wasn't an energetic match because, you know, I loved it so much. I just wanted people to feel what I felt. But at the end of the day, like people just are not going to have the same experiences. They're not. People are not always going to be an energetic match for the things that you are an energetic match for. And that doesn't mean that, oh, they just need to do some work and, you know, they just got to heal. And no, it's just, excuse my language, but no, it's not always like that. You know what I'm saying? It's just you, what's for you is for you and for you alone. What's for them is for them. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not, I'm not trying to convince anybody that Tanzania is where it's at. You feel it or you don't. But what I am doing is gearing myself towards making different content, okay? And I know I said that in my last video and I had to do the work to make that new content. And that's why I've been sitting as well. I've been sitting on that podcast for so long because I had to really ask myself, okay, Kat, where is this coming from? Because you're so used to being busy. Busy doesn't mean effective. You feel me? Like. Just because you're busy doesn't mean you're actually doing things. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? Like, was I busy running away from the things that I needed to address or to heal? Was I busy really creating what I said I was gonna be creating? Was I busy with life in general? Because I mean, I am a wife, I am a mother, we have multiple businesses that we are running simultaneously that all need our attention. And just to slide this in there, you guys, you know, we have actually branched out and we're, you know, in efforts to expand our inventory, sea moss powder is available for wholesale right now on travelingsister.com slash sea moss. And we are about to embark on a sale actually starting today up until the end of the year we are getting rid of all of our old inventory and we are bringing in the new year with brand new inventory you guys the purple had been sold out for a while we restocked and literally within three days we were sold out again thank you for all of you who have supported although i have been using cmos for a little bit um i never had been on the sales end of it and you know just being that it comes from 
right here in Tanzania, the Indian Ocean. Like, I just felt like it was something very special about that. Don't worry, this whole video is not gonna just be a sales pitch, but I just wanna let y'all know, Sea Boss Powder is on deck, you guys. So get your orders in before the end of the year. But, um, you know, I, I just, I found that a lot of things that I was doing were distractions to myself and distractions from my healing. And if this man, I'm telling you, if I hadn't learned one thing about Tanzania, it will force you to be in the place that you need to be energetically. And it will force you to realize that everything that's coming into your life is a direct reflection of where you are energetically. Let me repeat that again. Everything that is coming into your life currently is a direct, perfect, reflection of what you are manifesting energetically what you are attracting into your life energetically okay and the law of attraction is very real and i'm not sure if i've even said this in any videos but i feel like being here in tanzania specifically this region the arusha region the moshi region um anywhere where you're just like this was nature just connected, it's all around green. And not only just being in the vibration of nature, just being here in East Africa, being in Africa, being on the continent of Africa, I feel like things manifest a lot quicker. Not even saying that it's just like some mystical yada, 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 but let's just be real. We have returned home to the motherland from which we came. So, you know what I'm saying? We we have a certain power here when you're at home. You got that home team advantage, you feel me? So it's like things are magnified, at least for me, when I really focus my energy and think about something and write it down and do the actual work to manifest it, scripting, um, manif not manifestations, um, affirmations, you guys. I find that things are coming into my life a lot quicker, even negativity even negativity um you know it was a point in time where i was kind of surrounding myself with people who i knew weren't good for me energetically but me being that empath feeling like oh maybe i can help them maybe i can save these like you know what i'm saying like it's not it's not my job to do that you see what i'm saying and i found that those certain mindsets that those people had and the things that they would say, the constant negativity about everything was rubbing off on me. And I was like, hold on, Kat, this is literally not who you are. This is not who you are. You're like a loving person. You are a ball of light, like for real. And not, not to say that's who I am all the time either, but generally, yeah, I'm love, like for real. But even, on this journey as well in these past couple months. I've really been learning to embrace my darker side. I've been learning to embrace that other side. You see what I'm saying, that balance, because I am a Libra as well, but it has to be a balance there. You know what I'm saying? I've been learning to balance that yin and yang. You know what I'm saying? I've been learning to balance the light and the dark. Everything in life is duality. This is not gonna be a whole like, um, spill about that. Ignore my nails, you guys. They need to be done. They need to be done. They're terrible. Um, but it's just been, these past couple months have, have really been transformational for me. Probably the most transformational part of my journey when I stepped out um, of social media for a little bit and stepped out of YouTube and all of that and just dove within and really got to reflect on, okay, Kat, where are you? for the first time in, I don't know how long I've been checking in on myself and being like, you good today, Kat? Yeah, I'm good. How you? I'm good. You know, like really having a dialogue with myself and, and seeing where I am. Um, because honestly, if there's one takeaway from this video, there's no one, no, no one more important than you on this journey. But I know you're like, but traveling sister, I got kids, I got a husband, I got this, I got that, that I got to take care of. If you're not right, how are they going to be right? If you are not in a, a good mental space, how? How are you going to show up for them in the capacity that you need to show up for them if you can't show up for you? You know, and that was my biggest lesson. That has been my biggest lesson here is focus on you. Focus on you and everything else is going to fall in place. 
but you also have to maintain a balance because I know that as a mother and as a wife or as a husband and uh, you know a father or whoever you don't always have that freedom to just okay F everybody else I'm gonna focus on me you know what I'm saying you have other people depending on you in your circle so it can't it's not always that easy but what's imperative is that you find the time to check in with yourself even if you have to establish a routine in your household like okay you know these first you know 20 minutes 30 minutes of the day like I'm waking up earlier than everybody else and I'm I'm making it intentional to where I have time to meditate, to where I have time to just appreciate. You know what I'm saying? Meditation doesn't always have to look like, you know what I'm saying, da 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 da. Like it doesn't have to look like that. Your meditation could be painting, your meditation could be looking out the freaking window, your meditation could just be having a cup of coffee. Like, you know, whatever the, the case may be, still your mind and find time for yourself, find time to check in. Okay? So that is the biggest lesson is me first. It's the perfect time to be selfish. And let's let's take away that negative connotation of selfishness um, in general, you know, um, when it when it comes to you, because we're, we're always taught to be, oh, you got to give, you got to do for other people, do for this, do for that, show up for that person. You know, what are you doing for the community? F that. What you doing for yourself? What are you doing for you? How you going to show up for the community if you can't show up for yourself? Come on, we got to stop coming out here with all these mindsets like we got to save Africa or we got to like, oh, what do you, we got to give back and give back. Give to yourself first and have no reservations about it. Give to yourself first or you're going to burn out. <laughs> you're going to burn out. OK, um, so that's going to be the end of my rambling, you guys. But I am just so elated that I have survived five years here. <laughs> And that I've not only survived, I've thrived. Even the L's that I've taken have propelled me in the right direction. Many of them have served as a catalyst to kind of push me in a whole nother path, you know. Um, and I, I really reflect on a lot of my tough situations. Like, yep, that was the pivotal point where it made me into a better person. So, yeah, you guys, I didn't want this to be too long. Um, but thank God it didn't downpour on this camera and everything. And you guys, before this video is out, I just really want to thank each and every one of you. Oh my God. I want to thank every single person who has been donating to the GoFundMe and who has been hitting my cash up. You guys, mm, 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 mm. gratitude, seriously, like I've broke down crying like seriously gratitude for everyone who has supported this out of that i was able to get a brand new computer which was the number one thing you guys the number one thing i was able to get a brand new computer i was able to get some camera accessories i was able to get a gimbal i was able to get a lot of things that I needed. Now the GoFundMe is still open for anyone who still wants to pour in to what I'm doing and, and you know the people who believe in what I'm doing and everything. And thank each and every one of you for believing in what I'm doing who have been on this journey with me since day one. Y'all are the real MVPs, I swear to God. Y'all are the real MVPs. I know who y'all are. I see y'all, I see y'all, for real. I see y'all just like y'all see me. I see y'all in just the utmost gratitude, you guys. Um, actually, by the end of this week, I'm gonna be working on a mini documentary that I can finally do because I have the equipment to do it. You know, the updated equipment and Damn, I'm still in disbelief about it. To be honest, I'm still in disbelief sometimes. Like, I look at the support that I've gotten over the years. Mm, I'm not gonna get emotional in this video, so I'm gonna wrap it up. But you guys, um, just being in a space of gratitude right now, and that's another small point that I wanna make, is that when you're coming out here and you're going through those situations, truly truly try to find the gratitude within yourself for the universe presenting you that situation because that's just an opportunity to grow just keep that in your back pocket all right adversity is just room to grow and tools that you can use for your growth okay i'm done rambling five years whoop whoop okay gratitude love all of that good stuff y'all already know what it is love y'all peace